Welcome to another Business Tech Planet video. Today, we'll show you how to create a company intranet in Microsoft Loop. We'll talk about what an intranet is. How to create a file sharing page. A topical forum. A knowledge base. A meeting room. And how to embed the intranet into a Teams channel. An intranet is similar to the internet, in that both are formed from a network of computers. But the difference is that the internet is an open global network, whereas the intranet is a closed and local connection of computers, where employees can share resources securely. If you have a Microsoft 365 license, then you already have access to SharePoint, the world's most popular internet service. But if you want to make use of Loop's hyper-collaborative functionality, then you could build an intranet structure there by using some of our suggestions in this video. So let's get started. The whole setup is based in a single workspace. Here, we have a homepage with an info board, where team members can leave comments. We also have a documents page that links to shared files in SharePoint, that belong to a specific Teams channel. We've got a forum where team members can discuss various topics. There's a knowledge base where you can store all your important guides. And a subpage where your team can ask priority questions, with answers provided by a group of contributors. And there's a meeting room where all upcoming meetings are available, including their start time and date. But your intranet can include any number of additional pages. For example, you could also create a page for project-specific tasks, or anything you can think of to improve the collaborative effort of your team. To start, hit the circular plus button in the loop homepage. Then type Internet into the title box. Choose an icon by clicking the emoji button. Then click the cover at the top to select your preferred design. If you've got Jumpstart enabled, hit Continue, then Create. Otherwise, hit the Create button. Next, type Documents where it says Untitled Page. Then click Add Icon, and type Folder into the search bar. Now select a folder icon. Set the cover design to anything you like. To create a list of folders, type forward slash table, and hit enter on your keyboard. Now delete the second column. Then double click the first column header and type folders. We're going to use the files tab in our team's channel. But you could also use a shared OneDrive folder. Simply right-click the folders and select Copy Link. Hit the Copy button. Now head back to Loop and insert a folder emoji. To do that, type forward slash emoji, and select the emoji picker. Next, type in the name of the folder you copied. Then double-click the text to highlight it, and press Ctrl and V on your keyboard to paste the link. Now we're going to build the forum. Start by hitting the circular plus icon. Then select new page. And set the page title to forum. Style the forum page with an icon and cover design. Now create the topics you want to cover as individual subpages. To do that, click the three dots on the forum tab and select new subpage. Name and style the page to your preference. We're creating a topic for general discussion. Once you've made all your subpage topics, write out some instructions on how to use the forum. We're making an H2 header for the instructions. Below, create a new table. Name the first column how to. And name the second column instructions. Now check the description for a link to our guide, where you can find the instructions for using the forum. Copy the table contents, then head back to loop and paste into the first table cell. You could also make an optional table at the top, containing the topics or categories in your forum.
To create a new post, your team members should make a subpage in the topic they want to post in. Other members can then leave comments by clicking the comment icon that appears to the left of most text inputs. Now we're going to create a knowledge base for our internet. Start by creating a new page called knowledge base and style it to your preference. Now head over to our guide and this time copy the instructions for using the knowledge base. Once copied, Go back to loop and paste the instructions into the page. Next, create a new subpage called questions. When you've styled the subpage, create a table. Then click the plus icon above the column borders until you've got six columns. Name the first column question, the second column answer, the third send to, the fourth status, the fifth priority, and the last column date. Now click the down arrow next to send to, and change the column type to person. Then set the status column type to label, and click add label group. Name the label group status. Then type answered as the first option and unanswered as the second option. Then hit save. You can change the option colors by clicking a cell and then clicking the pen icons next to the options. Next, set the priority column type to a priority label. Finally, set the date column type to date. To ask a question, type it into the question column. Then click the Send To column, and select your team leader. Set the status to unanswered, and set the priority to your preference. Then click the Date column and select today's date. Now let's set up a contributor group that gets notified whenever a question is asked. Go to Outlook and click the three dots in the ribbon. Then go to Rules, and Manage Rules. There, click Add New Rule. Call the rule questions. Then click the select box under add a condition and select message body includes. Type questions.fluid into the adjacent text box. Next, click the select box under add an action and select forward to. Enter the names of your contributor group. Then hit the save button. To answer a question, create a new subpage called answers. Then select the question, and copy it. Now create a new subpage in Answers. And use the question as the page title. Once you've answered the question, head up and click the copy icon. Remember to hit the copy button to ensure the link's been copied correctly. Then head back to questions and type click here into the answer column. Highlight the text, and press Ctrl and V on your keyboard to paste the link. Now leave a space and type an at symbol, then select the name of whoever asked the question. Finally, set the status column to answer. You could also create a subpage here called Guides, to store your important onboarding information. To create the meetings page, make a table with six columns. The first columns for the title or description, which you can link directly to a team's meeting. The second columns used to list the required attendees, where you can check off those who attended. The third and fourth columns are custom labels for the hours and minutes, so you can set a start time for the meeting. The fifth columns for the meeting date. And the last column is a custom label, to show whether the meeting is scheduled, has ended, or has been cancelled. Now let's embed the internet into a team's channel. Start by copying any of the pages.
Then head over to your team's channel and click the plus icon at the top. Type website into the search bar, and then select the website app. On the next page, name your website tab internet. Then paste your link into the URL bar. Finally, hit save. Perfect. We now have a functioning intranet embedded into our team's channel. That's all for this video. If you have any ideas on how to improve the intranet, let us know in the comments. And remember to check the description for additional links and resources. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe for more Microsoft videos.